talking about culture shock for me personally the first okay I'm, i have two i had two culture shock i wouldn't say the first one is a cultural shock it was the language like coming here at the age of 22 i never been to a country where there is like zero english like even somewhere even buying something or going to a shop nowadays there are a lot of um, young people who speak english because of the internet and all those things but 8 years ago even nalmati language english language was a it was not needed so i'm not i'm not going to say like there was no english i can understand because it was not required the second culture shock not the culture shock i respect what uh, now i understand what they're doing that is the handshakes you go you oh oh you oh, have handshakes you, you, you go to you go to a room you. you go to a room of 15 men and you have to give a handshake for all 15 you go the you do the rounds you walk around give the handshakes i mean for me in the beginning it was very difficult but now even without thinking i go in first like handshake 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 and then thank you very much i got you i got you yeah and uh, that handshake was well um, it's it's a uh, it's a good way yeah. of also getting out of trouble yeah yeah it's a handshake everything is uh, connected with the handshake here <laughs> yeah so the, i i th- those well the handshake had not really been a uh, issue for me um cuz i've never really had to um maybe because um i've never really been too far outside of almaty um mm-hmm. you know when i do go outside of almaty it's, it's it's more like to have fun somewhere you know like kachigai or mm-hmm. uh, um i remember when i used to come here before i used to go to um pakistan you know to make a quick visa run mm-hmm. or not um but those are the reasons why i would you know um really step outside of almaty so i, I didn't really find any of that but that's interesting i need to i need to look into that i didn't, yeah. I didn't know that even didn't even the ha- that. even the handshakes there are a lot of types of handshake and depending upon the age the situation and number of handshakes it it needs a separate 5 minute video for that <laughs> yeah i didn't know that that's that's interesting i'll look into that <laughs> so as so a being in kazakhstan uh, have you tried any kazakh dish and maybe you can say how it's made or which one is your favorite <laughs> oh man um I don't know how the Kazakhs do it, but they make baklajan, and you know what yeah, baklajan yeah. is, right? Um, those of you that don't understand what it is, you want me to explain it or? Yep, yep, please. Yep, yep, please. It's, it's just eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the way that they make eggplants, I don't know what it is, but they make that taste like meat. Yeah. I, I don't know how, <laughs> you know. Um, so I love the way that Kazakhs cook eggplants. So baklajan, if I need to say it in the native tongue. and uh, also dish parmak of course yeah. you know um yeah. that's that's one of the uh, you know more famous dishes here but my favorite hands down yeah. favorite yeah. shashlik baby yeah. you know it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. shashlik all day every day yeah. and back home we call that of course barbecue yeah. but yeah, yeah it's just something about how they season the meat how they make it yo my baja yeah. uh, um you know what baja is right it's a baja. it's a brother a brother in law No. Well, Abaja is actually my sister-in-law's husband. Yep, so yep, we yep. are both yep, yep. Ma- married into the same family. Uh-huh. So we kind of have like, you know, our connection through that, right? So they that wear each other's baja and he is mean at cooking a uh, 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 a good shashlik, man. He's he's very talented at it. So I and think he was the first one that uh, made in, it. For in Kazakhstan, Sorry. I think they mesh in may it's just my uh, observation i think in kazakhstan they observe the manliness of a man by how they can cook shashlik yeah yeah because they yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's as a man they should be able to handle the meat marinate it cook perfectly you should be able near stay near the barbecue no barbecue the machine that it could do this thing make the perfect shashlik you get respect in the community It's true. It's true. You you're right. You're right. Cuz it's like a a very manly thing to do to cut the meat, yeah. to season the meat, to start the fire, yeah. you know, yeah. to flame the fire and to, you know, hand out, yeah. you know, the, the 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 meat. Yeah, you're right. I never actually thought of that. But just yes, right. Cuz like I would see my uh, my baja, he would just like, you know, he's like the man. Yeah. Nobody touches yeah. anything. Yeah, no matter you even if you offer to help, you're like uh Uh, it's not a good thing to help. <laughs> yeah. 
You're standing in the way. You're yeah. not helping. You're just in the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I've never really thought about it, but yes, that's true. That's true. So, uh, moving, yeah. moving forward towards hospitality in Kazakhstan, because whenever some foreigners or locals, when they, when they ask them, talk about Kazakhstan, they say, hospitality is great. It's amazing. But I, I personally observed and it's true. Uh, have you been to any Kazakh wedding in Kazakhstan? I went to one. How yeah, was I was it? lucky to experience one. Oh, I'll send you videos, man. There was this one. Um, oh, you said, how was it? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I don't want to interrupt for you. Me, for me, uh, usually the foreigners get more attention for, than the bride if we go to a wedding. Really? Um, well, lucky for the one that I went to. Um, I think everybody already knew me or most of the people there already knew me or knew of me. Okay. So I didn't steal too much of the bride's thunder, as we say back home. Um, but one thing that we did, there was this one, you know, uh, um, particular section of the whole ceremony where they were playing games mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and the men had to dress like babushkas, mm -hmm. right? And so I was dressed up, you know, I had my little purse, my, my jacket. That was fun. That was like... Some of the most fun that I've had here in like forever. I need to find these videos and send them to you sure. so, so you can actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, because hospitality, hospitality is great, especially in wedding and you go, I don't have to explain to you, I'm just saying, uh, going to any Kazakh people, Kazakh person's home as a guest, you know, the table is completely full of food and I get stressed because I have to eat. I, I Personally, I feel like I have to eat everything because they have prepared, they have bought these things, they have arranged beautifully. But uh, hospitality, I think it comes from a nomadic culture, you know, you, gi you not give, yeah. you give what you have at home for all the guests that comes to home. I think it's they're yeah. still carrying that. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely agree because when I, I um, stayed with my mother-in-law, you know, my, my in-laws, mm -hmm. both of them, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that I did experience is that I, I would eat too much <laughs> you know so i agree with you and so my face started to get a little round yeah. you know my belly started to come out a little bit and you know and the piva was not helping bro yeah. you know <laughs> so, so with all of that now you have to add beer to the mix so i started developing a little belly you know and then i, I would look at my wife and i'm like what do you think? She's like, oh my God, you're sexy. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, trying try to make me feel good. Cool. I, I agree with you. If you visit mother-in-law twice a week, everybody's going to get a big belly. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I believe it. And you'll get to eat really good, yeah, man. Yeah. You just eat too much. Too much. Yeah, it's true. Too much. Uh, uh, I agree. So, Liz, so you have a Kazakh wife, I have a Kazakh wife. We should... I'm, how should I put We should technically and legally know some Kazakh words. Do you have some list of Kazakh words or sentences that you use uh, every day? Um, I do. I do. As a matter of fact, I know um, Kermanda, which is come, uh -huh. come here. Okay. Um, okay. I know, of course, Moron, okay. Uh, okay. Mangdai, okay. Tus, okay. Hos. Um, I think this is Kolak, uh -huh. Beard, I okay. think. Um, uh, what else? I know Tokta, okay. Stop. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, what else do I know? Uh, Urkin Ratnet. Yeah. That's uh, Spasiba Bajoy. Okay. I think, uh, uh, thanks a lot, right? Um, uh, of course, Salam, uh, um, which is hello. Uh, yeah, so I, I know some words yeah. uh, um, to yeah. be able to say, oh, this person just said hello. Okay. Oh, this person just said thank you. Okay. Um, oh, this person is talking about my big nose. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, I know some words. It, it's easy to it's easy to learn um, small small words. I, I I as I said before, I understand the topic of conversation, but sometimes happen when I live in Aktube, living for four years, police have never stopped me here. But in Almaty, I stayed for four years. Police have stopped me maybe four or five times got arrested twice because I didn't have my passport and sometimes they do check up while walking on the street so I learned so for me for me I didn't worry a lot because one I spoke a little bit of Russian second there was nothing illegal everything was fine they just had to check in the office done so some, whenever the police stops me it's a joke in Kazakhstan maybe it's not I just raise my hand and say Aksha Jok Aksha Jok means like I don't have any money 
it doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't mean like bribing or i'm like afraid i says just like aksha jo and then there's like mm, you know kaise kaise <laughs> yeah i was like bro i got that please let me go <laughs> No, I got but, you. But when I got arrested, you know, uh, at the heat of the moment, you know, you, I didn't know what to do. Raising the voice, they just took me through in the police car, took the took me back to the police station, make me sit there for like two hours. They check the system, everything is fine. They said, okay, thank you very much. So everything was okay. Yeah. But this was eight years ago. Nowadays, it's very less because now Kazakhstan is trying to be more uh, traveler friendly, more European friendly. more western yeah. friendly so these things doesn't happen a lot nowadays uh, yeah. we spoke a lot of positive things about kazakhstan we talked about happy stuff good stuff uh, from your personal experience what are the negative aspects of living in kazakhstan do you miss something or oh man that's that's a very good question and i had not yet experienced anything negative per se not until i started this whole <laughs> and that was my wife she's doing something right <laughs> all right <laughs> so so i had not experienced anything negative not until this whole process of getting this thing done so what i find is it's very it's difficult. difficult and people of course have their misconceptions mm-hmm. of you as, as a foreigner, foreigner. Yeah. you know and, and Yeah. Um because of many foreigners before and I can understand their frustration at times. Mm-hmm. Uh because of many foreigners that came before you and I, they built sort of a a a a, a bad yeah. reputation yeah. for us in a, in a way that we don't know how to assimilate ourselves in the culture. So what started happening is that everywhere I would go and a lot of the places that I would go to get this thing done or to get this document or to do this is that um people's assumption is that I came here looking for a better life yeah and for the and visa this is the, visa. yes <laughs> and this is their country mm-hmm. and you know there's you know we don't have any more to give yeah. you know go back to your country none of these words were said yep. but the body that yeah. says it all you know and it wasn't until I opened my mouth and I started speaking english and they're like wait I I I think he's American. And then they ask for my passport and then I pull it out and then they're like, "Oh, he is American." And then the tone changed. Yeah. And so it yeah. seems more like, "Oh, this is a person who finds my country beautiful," which is true. Yeah. Who finds my country amazing, which is also true. Mm-hmm. Who wants to live here and be with us and be part of the culture and learn about, which is all true. But I would wish that to be the first thing, okay. rather than okay. you know a first thought. Oh, this person is here because they think that we have something to give. Yeah. You know, um, which you know, all countries have this. I agree. All countries have this. You know, and um, uh, I mean even America. You know, uh, um, of course, when a person says that I'm Mexican, you know, the ones that are ignorant, you know, the ones that are you know. Uh, then i say it racist mm-hmm. you know they will say some things like oh go back to your country or something yeah. really and, <laughs> you know? and, and they, they, they won't care if you're sensitive or not they will say it directly <laughs> yeah yeah you know so that and and here uh that's the only thing that i've faced and it's not a racism or discrimination it's more like oh another one of you why are you guys all moving here yeah, why are you, you guys <laughs> like, filling up the space yeah <laughs> I said I think we yeah. should we should say like this is the not ninth largest country and there's just 18 million people that is space. <laughs> and so much space, you know? <laughs> yeah, so much of it. You know, so if I as a foreigner wants to come here and I I've never committed any crimes in my country, uh um and I came here educated, you know, I came here respectful, uh welcoming of of others, you know, point of views, cultures and I'm very accepting. Of, of of learning about your culture and how to behave within your your city or your country and learn your laws and rules if i am all of that then i come to bring value mm. to what's already there i didn't come to take you know i come to to give more mm. you know and and to add to what you've already built you know and this is why i'm here because of what you built mm. i find it to be so beautiful that i want to be a participant and it's growing 
you know, and it's a, 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 a beautiful future. And this is something that I often say to my wife, like, and my wife would ask me at times, like, why am I so fascinated by, by Kazakhstan? And the beauty with it is that, first of all, the people here are beautiful. Mm. Inside and out, I find them to be beautiful. And so you'll find that a lot of them, if you just sit and you talk mm. and they, they, they see, oh, wait, you're not judgmental. Mm. You are just different from me. Mm. You're not saying what I am is a bad thing. You're saying what you are is different from what I am, but that's okay. And so what you find is beautiful conversations start yeah. to happen. And I think it's the mind of the Kazakh people that allows it to happen because they are very knit, you know, yeah, it's a very uh, strong type they have culture. This, just, they call it a blood, yeah. blood relation. They keep the blood. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, and just, just the same in India. Yeah. Because I told you, my best friend is Indian. Yeah. He's actually my, um, uh, well, he would have been. been my daughter's uh, godfather, but he was too, too worried about the responsibilities. <laughs> but yeah, he's... he's <laughs> Yeah. And um, so, yeah, he's, 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 you know, one of my best friends, if not the best friend. Um, and, and, and I've experienced that with him as well, you know, and, and, and even within your culture, people are very knit and, and, and family oriented. Family I oriented. Love that. So, yeah, I agree. I agree with you because the, I agree with the point where those who came before us, I'm not saying all of them, maybe just one person created a bad taste for the people to come after, even yeah. from India. Even now, when I even even though I'm 30 years old, half of my hair is gray. I get into taxi. They first ask is, "Am I an Indian medical student?" Because there are a lot of Indian medical students studying in uh, Kazakhstan in all states. So they, these young kids, they go to the club or the bar. They have fights, and they, that create a bad taste for Indians in Kazakhstan. But at the moment, it's fine. People understand. Or they are young. They are um, are not adults yet, but still. Okay, uh, let's go to the last question I have uh, because my battery, my camera is saying that it's overheating. Not battery is not the issue, it's overheating now. <laughs> yeah, mine's at 3%. Okay, let's actually. have this last question and probably we will have one more session tomorrow whenever you have time about the PR and the residence. Sure. Okay, the last question I have for you is what is your advice if you can give to someone who wants to visit the Kazakhstan for the first time? Uh, my advice to anyone that wishes to, to, to visit here is to um, learn first about the culture. Yeah. Uh, learn as much as you can. And, you know, people might say, oh, that's obvious. But to a lot of people, it's not. They think, oh, I'm traveling to this country. I'm a tourist. They'll know I'm a tourist. Whatever I do that's disrespectful will be forgiven because it's assumed that I don't know. Um, and that's a very big misconception because that can make the difference between a wonderful holiday as they say in the UK and also in India um, that can make for a wonderful vacation or it can make for a very terrible one you know and all you have to do is just adjust you know your approach so learn as much as you can about the culture and when I say by learning about the culture is to respect first of all um, others religions point of views um, don't come here and try to impose your ideas and the way that you see the world onto to, to anyone here because you are in their home, you are a guest, and you should act accordingly. So my advice, the number one advice, is to learn about the culture as much as you can. And learn the basics, you know, of the language. Uh, how to say thank you, because that goes a long way. Yeah, saying, and not only saying, how to say rahmet, you. saying rahmet in Kazakh is the best way to have a conversation. It will, it will get you so far. Yeah, it will get you so far. You know, and so what you find is people don't understand how little words can get you big things. You know, like um, I'll give you a great, uh, great story. Uh, my first, first, very first time here in Kazakhstan. Uh, it was my fourth day here. Um, and I just, I went out and, you know, it's late. And I'm like, okay, I've seen all my friends do it. I'm going to try, you know, try to get a taxi, you know. Taxi, you know, you know, when they stop, and then I'll be like, you know, Skorka, and then they tell me some number, and I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be that does not sound time. like the number, yeah, yeah, right? And so, but this guy stopped for me, this Russian fellow, um, and he's like, hey, you need to write, I'm like, yeah, and then he's like, all right, um, hop in, well, how far do you live? He spoke fair enough English to, to have a conversation. And um, I told them, at the time I lived around this uh, Gagarina, uh -huh. I don't know if you're familiar Gagarina with Gagarina Street, Street Sapphire Gagarina. 
<laughs> Boom. Yes. So I lived on that street, and then I just told them, like, I know it's Gagarina. I can follow on my GPS how close we are to, to my building because I pinned it on my map. Uh, but that's about as much as I can give them. He's like, all right, have one. And we start driving. So this Russian guy is like, yo, I love music. You love music? And he started introducing me to some music, and we're having this great conversation. And then, you know, when I got to my destination, I'm like, okay, so how much do I owe you, man? He's like, no, you paid me in an awesome conversation. Okay. I'm like, yo, <laughs> yo, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I'm like, I want to play you though. He's like, you already did. You gave me a conversation that I needed, mm -hmm. you know? And it's so funny because sometimes, man, all somebody needs is just a good conversation to distract them from what they might be going through. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what he might have been going through, but by just having this dialogue with me, he was able to just kind of say, yo, this was my payment. This is better than money. And I and, and I was very grateful. And, and uh, um, I wish there was a way that I could show my gratitude to him, but all he would take was just a simple thank you, you know? And it's stories like this, man, that makes this place beautiful, man. <laughs>